Good evening, San Bonani, Huinant, Dumelang. My name is Dries Pretorius. I'm the General Counsel of UJ. It is my honour and privilege to welcome everyone on behalf of the VC and the University to the Professional Inauguration of Professor Kapil Gupta. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you, the family, friends and colleagues of Kapil, to this joyful and landmark moment. In particular, welcome to Professor Kapil Gupta, the inductee, Professor Daniel Mashau, Executive Dean of the F Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment, and Dr. Sylvester Bolokang, our respondent. Dr. Bolokang is the Principal Scientist at the CSIR. Also, a warm welcome to all members of Senate and other colleagues and guests who are joining us online. The inauguration of professors is a public ceremony in which a newly appointed professor is inducted into office and delivered their inaugural address. The ceremony for inauguration of professors has its roots in medieval universities and serves multiple purposes. Firstly, it's an expression of welcome and an entry for new professors joining the circle of colleagues who are already professors. Secondly, it's a, it provides a platform for the professors to display their expertise in the relevant discipline and showcase their research. Thirdly, it stands out as a moment of pride and celebration for the incumbent, the family, the fellow scholars. In essence, it's a celebration of the achievement of major milestones, contributions to the discipline, and ultimately the impact on society. T today, we gather to witness the entry of Professor Gupta to the illustrious community of scholars at this university. This evening, we will listen to Professor Gupta as one further step in the journey of being a professor. This is a journey which does not culminate once a lecture has been given. It is a self-reflective pause on the journey of the professor, with a promise of more to enrich our minds and simultaneously contributing to the rich intellectual body of work in the discipline. Kapil, we are looking forward to your address. Uh, I now invite the Executive Dean, Professor Daniel Mashau, to introduce Professor Kapil Gupta. As the University of Johannesburg, it's indeed our great pleasure today to induct in the list of professors, Professor Kapil Gupta. I will be introducing him, but I just want to say that we are really excited by this development and we trust that uh, he serves as an example to many of our colleagues who needs to still reach this level. Professor Kapil Gupta is working as a professor at the University of Johannesburg and is currently serving the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering Technology at our Dornfontein campus. His bachelor's qualification is in mechanical engineering and his master's is in computer integrated manufacturing. He obtained a PhD in mechanical engineering from the reputed Indian Institute of Technology Indore in India with a specialization in advanced manufacturing. His PhD research was focused on advanced machining of gears by wire electric discharge machining. He also completed a postgraduate diploma in higher education from the University of Johannesburg in 2020. Professor Gupta has more than 10 years of professional experience in academic and research fields. Modern machining processes, precision engineering, gear technology, and sustainable manufacturing and industry 4.0 are the areas of his interest. He is a Y-rated researcher by the National Research Foundation of South Africa and a member of the South African Young Academic of Science. He is registered as an engineer at the Engineering Council of South Africa, EXA, as a professional engineering technologist. Professor Kapil Gupta teaches manufacturing engineering, material science, manufacturing system design, and research methodology 
to the B Bachelor of Engineering Technology students at undergraduate and honors level. He's currently involved in several academic activities and bears important responsibilities, administrative responsibilities at the department and in the faculty. He is doing research, innovation, and training projects funded by the international agencies like the NRF South Africa and the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK. With national and international collaborators, he has successfully supervised 12 masters and doctoral students and has hosted four postdoctoral research fellows. He is currently supervising 15 postgraduate students and hosting three senior research associates. Professor Gupta has authored a total of over 100 high quality research and review articles that has been published in high impact international journals and proceedings of engineering of international conferences. He has also authored and edited 12 international books on advanced manufacturing topics such as hybrid manufacturing, advanced gear manufacturing, micro and precision manufacturing, spark erosion machining and sustainable manufacturing. He is currently serving on the editorial boards of five international journals as an associate editor for two others. He is also editing international book series. Professor Gupta's research group has received best paper and poster awards. He is solicited by international institutes, universities, and societies for expert and keynote talks. Professor Gupta also actively participates in what we call SOTL, Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Research and Training, and has developed a virtual lab on manufacturing engineering for remote learning. His teaching and learning activities are aligned with Engineering 4.0 and Sustainable Development Goals. We are now, colleagues, going to wait and listen to Professor Gupta give us his inaugural lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Mashao. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start with the uh, uh, tokens of gratitude. First of all, I would like to start with our General Counsel, Mr. Pretorius, uh, Executive Dean, Professor Mashao, uh, my HOD, uh, Professor Mashinini, our Head of School, uh, Professor Gibani, uh, other colleagues who are sitting here and who are watching online, my family members, uh, especially my parents, in-laws, wife, and uh, my son, Anish, and daughter, Adya, and all my students, collaborators, who are uh, at local and international level. Uh, I would like to start this uh, presentation or this address uh, uh, with a belief that this is going to be a sort of a call it is going to be a sort of appeal to start working towards sustainable development goals, how we can make a better world by advanced and sustainable manufacturing and many other fields of engineering, whether it's civil or electrical or computer science. So there is a need to identify which sustainable development goal we can address upon and we can target on and contribute towards uh, making a better world by 2030 and then beyond that. So let me start. These are the contents of my presentation, introduction to advanced and sustainable manufacturing, and then making a better world by advanced and sustainable manufacturing with the help of some cases. What we have conducted here at University of Johannesburg, our own examples, we'll try to understand. And then some facts and figures, what's going on across the world, and then conclusion and my call to action. So let's start. 
introduction to advanced and sustainable manufacturing the very basic thing manufacturing the word manufacture has come from two latin words uh, that is manus and factus made by hand it used to be made by hand but now it is mechanization and automation when we talk about the technological significance of manufacturing or technological importance then a raw material is converted into useful product by implementation of manufacturing processes or operations and manufacturing processes operations are used to shape size change the structure and the properties of raw material the economical importance if you try to understand then the economical importance is a low value raw material is converted into higher value useful product now if we talk about the contribution of manufacturing then the south africa gdp gross domestic product 2021 is 418 billion united states dollar so the contribution of manufacturing is 13 to 14% and it has been consistent since last 3 4 years more than 10% contribution of manufacturing is there to the gdp now let's come on the manufacturing so there is conventional manufacturing and advanced manufacturing the very basic classification of manufacturing if we talk about then there are subtractive type processes additive type processes and uh, deforming and forming processes very basic classification is shaping operations and assembly operations so those shaping and assembly operations are covered uh, into this classification that is subtractive additive and forming and plenty of uh, inherent manufacturing techniques are there under these categories there is another category that is very important that is the surface property enhancement and in the category of subtractive we have finishing processes to enhance the surface properties uh, such as the micro geometry the features the aesthetics uh, shape size dimensions and in additive category we have coatings in forming deforming category we have the shock peening laser shot peening this type of operations and other side we have the heat treatment so there are developments there are advancements in conventional processes and there are new advanced processes modern processes as well let's go ahead let's talk about the advanced and sustainable manufacturing so there is a need of advancement why because there are lots of challenges and new requirements related to cost quality and sustainability so to fulfill that requirement or those all requirements we need advancements we need some modernization so that is advanced manufacturing so there could be many such definitions of advanced manufacturing but what i could uh, develop is this advancements in manufacturing via incorporating intelligent novel and sustainable technologies with an aim to enable it to address the growing needs and fulfill the new requirements related to as i said cost quality and sustainability so there are lots of branches in advanced manufacturing itself sustainable manufacturing itself is uh, uh, one of the tools of advanced manufacturing and i believe i understand that this advanced and sustainable manufacturing both are the tools of industry 4.0 so in advanced manufacturing itself uh, there are smart manufacturing artificial intelligence automation mechatronics advanced joining processes micro precision manufacturing surface engineering modern machining it manufacturing these type of technologies so sustainable manufacturing is one of the tools now what is sustainable manufacturing so as the name implies something is done to bring the sustainability so what that sustainability is we'll talk about sustainability as well but what the standard definition of sustainability so the uh, standard definition of sustainable manufacturing is the creation of manufactured products using processes that minimize negative environmental impacts conserve energy and natural resources and are safe for employees communities and consumers and are economically sound so there are basically two aspects aspect number 1 is the manufacturing of sustainable products green products and aspect number 2 is sustainable manufacturing of all products so sustainability related interventions that we'll talk about so what type of interventions with the help of some examples i'll try to explain let's go ahead i think here it is also important to discuss something about little bit about uh, industry 4.0 so industrial revolutions industry 1.0 to industry 4.0 it is started in 1784 so it was basically governed based on uh, the steam power first industrial revolution then second industrial revolution based on electricity third one computing now fourth one 
we are in the era of fourth industrial revolution, industry 4.0. So this industrial revolution is for all business processes, but subset is the industry 4.0 for manufacturing processes, or you can say for production. So the pervasive use of digital technologies like cyber physical system and internet of things to manage, track, and monitor every aspect of business processes is the fourth industrial revolution. Now, why to adopt? So there could be many reasons, but two important Reasons are to save time, reduce wastages, and to enhance efficiency and safety, and to increase uh, profits, and to stay competitive globally. But along with this, there are some limitations. So limitation number one is the dehumanization of industrialization. So that is, be that is being taken care of by the technologies like cobots, collaboration of human and robots, so we started talking about industry 5.0. Now, the another biggest disadvantage is environmental degradation. So to cope up with this, to overcome this challenge, sustainable manufacturing is in place. Now, let's go ahead. So a little bit more about uh, fourth industrial revolution. The uh, term fourth industrial revolution was first coined by Klaus Schwab in 2015 uh, of the uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, meeting and then the definition of uh, fourth industrial revolution we have already discussed there are uh, certain tools so like simulation cloud computing advanced manufacturing system integration cyber security it manufacturing augmented virtual reality mixed reality these are some tools of uh, industry 4.0 if you try to understand with the help of a very small basic example then in industry 4.0 what is happening the information flow is cross Customer can interact with the raw material supplier. Customer can interact with the manufacturer. And then they all can participate in production of any product, manufacturing processes. So tailor-made products are possible. But it used to be a linear chain where customer has to rely on the manufacturer only. Whatever is coming out, customer has to receive that only. But now you can see because of this digital technology interventions, the things have been changed. And there is a a sort of uh, a variety and a quick response and, and uh, 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 savings and loss of uh, vestiges and these type of things are there due to this industry 4.0. So it has really changed our life in all aspects. As I said, industry 4.0 is a subset of fourth industrial revolution. We generally speak about uh, production and manufacturing. Let's go ahead and try to understand making a better world by advanced and sustainable manufacturing. So what that better world is. Better world means sustainable world, where the equal opportunities and focus is on economic growth and social inclusion, along with the environment protection. So it's not only the environment, it's the economy and society as well. And how to address in terms of manufacturing? So with the help of various manufacturing processes, if we are focusing on reducing the cost of manufacturing operation or cost of product development, if we are focusing on uh, finding out some ways to uh, keep the environment neat and clean uh, with the uh, uh, workshop uh, technicians or with the uh, staff therein, then we are also talking about the economic growth and social inclusion along with the environmental protection. Now. It is about the people, planet, and profit. We have to take care of all. A very basic definition of sustainability, sustainability is the ability to exist constantly or ability to continue a defined behavior indefinitely. But United Nations understands sustainability as sustainable development, development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Now, here it is important to go ahead and discuss about the sustainable development goals because uh, in United Nations General Assembly 2015, 17 sustainable development goals were set. Goal number one to 17, from no poverty to a partnership for the goals. And with a view that uh, we would be having a better world by 2030, that better world where equal opportunities and the focus would be on economic growth, social inclusion, and environment protection. So here there is a need to uh, connect with these goals based upon our specialization and the field we are working in. So uh, being a manufacturer engineer, being a professor teacher, I can relate with goal number four, quality education. I can relate with goal number nine, goal number 12. And 
goal number eight. So we'll try to discuss how these are related and how we can make an impact. So here, advanced manufacturing and sustainable development goals. So as I said, we need to relate. But here, what I find is goal number 17, partnership for the goals, is a key by which you can address other goals or you can make contribution towards other goals. Like what other goals? So goal number three, good health and well-being. Quality education, goal number four, goal number eight, decent work and economic growth. Industry innovation and infrastructure, goal number 12, responsible consumption and production. Here the targets were these, for what? Because the intention is to conserve water, soil, energy, to protect the climate, to reduce the waste, to reduce the cost, and enhance the health and safety. By how? By upgradation of industries and infrastructure, by strengthening the scientific and technological capacity, and enhancement of research and working towards sustainability. So in advanced manufacturing, how we can do that? We can do by developments in technology and machine tools, by process hybridization, hybrid manufacturing, by process optimization, intelligent monitoring and control, and material recycling. So there are lots of tools and techniques in advanced manufacturing itself, like life cycle engineering, green machining, hybrid manufacturing, energy and resource efficiency, best techniques, intelligent manufacturing, uh, soft computing and statistical optimization techniques, and uh, many other remanufacturing and recycling type techniques. Uh, let's go ahead and try to understand with the help of example number one, that is case one, how to make a better world by advanced and sustainable manufacturing. Case number one, advanced and green machining of difficult to machine materials. So there are difficult to machine materials like titanium, nickel alloys, and various soft materials as well as like aluminum, magnesium. So there are challenges related to the conventional machining. So to overcome those challenges, we need to bring some novelty. We need to bring some advancements. So when we talk about the conventional machining, so in conventional machining, if we are bringing the tool treatment, tool texturing type of techniques, then yes, we are bringing the, the sustainability interventions. We are talking about the sustainability and advanced manufacturing. If we are cutting difficult to machine materials with the help of uh, sustainable lubrication techniques like minimum quantity lubrication, cryogenic cooling, then yes, we are talking about sustainability and we are targeting towards goal number three, nine, 12, and eight. When we talk about advanced manufacturing, or advanced machining, non-conventional machining processes, then there are four basic non-conventional machining processes, which are the substitute of uh, conventional machining, but these non-conventional advanced machining themselves are the uh, having some points or some concerns related to the sustainability. So to address those concerns, there are some advancements, like when we talk about electric discharge machining, so dry EDM, near dry EDM, green EDM is in picture, is in place. When we talk about uh, laser beam machining, or laser cutting, then eco LBM and underwater LBM is done to minimize the thermal effects of laser. So these are the attempts towards sustainability. When we talk about abrasive water jet machining, so this itself is an advanced machining, but in order to bring the sustainability, there are interventions like ice jet machining. So in place of abrasive particles, we use ice particles. So those particles, there is uh, no tension or there is nothing related to the uh, recycling and they are very safe from the point of view of machining soft material. When we talk about electrochemical machining, then green electrochemical machining, uh, sustainable uh, electrolytes are there for electrochemical machining, pulse ECM we can go with. So these are some sustainably related interventions for machining of DTM materials in advanced and sustainable manufacturing. As I said, these type of techniques, so here we can see heat assisted machining is there, and then cryogenic machining, uh, minimum quantity lubrication machining, ice jet machining, and underwater laser cutting. So heat assisted machining, when the yield strength or the hardness of any material is a problem, then we soften that material by heat assisted machining. By the and, uh, outside uh, supply, we just uh, heat the material, maybe the gas flame, and we try to reduce the hardness so that we can have the benefits in terms of uh, improving or enhancing the machinability of that particular difficult to machine material. Cryogenic cooling based machining is there where cryogenic coolant like liquid nitrogen at very low temperature, minus 190 degree, 200 degree centigrade is supplied to the machining zone. 
and then it 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 makes a cushion like arrangement between the tool chip interface and uh, tool life is uh, uh, tool life is prolonged minimum quantity lubrication so instead of the conventional lubrication technique where many liters of lubricant per minute we just supply to the machining zone instead of that in minimum quantity lubrication we just supply or sprinkle the micro droplets of the vegetable oil or green lubricant so this is how we try to make a difference towards safety we, this is how we try to make a difference to, towards reducing the cost related to the energy related to the lubricant and making the environmental uh, uh, sustainability or making the environment clean and green now uh, here down you can see uh, ice jet machining so as i said ice particles in place of abrasive particles are used to cut some soft material so these are the sustainability interventions in advanced machining that is the abrasive water jet machining underwater laser cutting so laser there are thermal adverse effects of laser so in order to avoid those thermal adverse effects we do underwater laser cutting so we get uh, uh, the work piece or our job or product having the uh, quality much improved uh, let's go ahead here in case number one itself some of our examples which we conducted here carried out the work at university of johannesburg with our local and international collaborators and the students so sustainable machining of materials for biomedical applications like titanium and uh, nickel titanium shape memory alloys these are the biomaterials so if you are making attempts towards towards producing bio implants using these materials then you are contributing towards goal number 3 sdg 3 but you know machining is challenging so to overcome that challenge if our attempts are towards reducing the consumption of harmful cutting fluid energy and resource efficiency then we are targeting towards or contributing towards goal number 9 that is the industry innovation and infrastructure and goal number 12 responsible production and consumption so some piece of work where we tried to investigate the machinability and improved the machinability of uh, titanium alloy and nickel titanium shape memory alloy uh, under the influence of minimum quantity lubrication so those photographs are seen and those machining was uh, uh, that machining particular was targeted to uh, make the dental implants we also attempted machining of titanium small rods by thermoelectric erosion process so one such setup you can see there where a rotary setup is there uh, for uh, possible turning and the uh, wire tool wire electrode or wire radium machine is trying to cut that uh, rotary workpiece and we investigated and we got some good results so we reported our results in these review and research articles also as uh, uh, Professor Mashao said about my books, so I published some books on sustainability. So these are some examples of our research we reported. Now let's go ahead on example number two, that is case number two, how to make a better world and why advanced and sustainable manufacturing. So advanced and sustainable manufacturing of gears. So targeting SDG 9 and SDG 12, sustainable development goal 9, that is industry innovation infrastructure, sustainable development goal 12, responsible consumption and production. So conventional manufacturing of gear is a challenge. By conventional gear manufacturing processes, you cannot make high quality gears. You have to expose your gear to further finishing operation. And when you expose your gear to further finishing operation, that, that is time consuming. Lot of cost is involved there and also not environmentally friendly. So we tried to develop high quality miniature gears by advanced machining processes. So these are the advanced machining processes we attempted I myself in my PhD, then my student conducted in uh, uh, as a master research and one of my PhD students also conducted the laser cutting of miniature gears and quite interesting results we obtained results we obtain in terms of the manufacturing quality of those gears much better than the manufacturing quality of the gears produced by the conventional processes so these dean Deutsch normal these are the Gen uh, german standards so dean quality up to five we achieved dean quality one is the best quality dean quality 12 is the worst quality so by conventional processes you cannot make gears up uh, better than dean quality nine so here we achieved Dean quality five, Dean one, as I said, is the best quality. So quite interesting and, and encouraging result we obtained by our 
attempts advance and sustainable manufacturing of gears in that series we also investigated and tried to do um, minimum quantity lubrication assisted machining of automobile gears 20 mn cr5 is the material so these gears are extensively utilized in automobiles so we tried to investigate because the procedure for machining is hobbing and there are lots of problems with the conventional gear hobbing so we tried to investigate the influence of minimum quantity lubrication and green lubricant utilized so quite interesting result we obtained in terms of whether we talk about the tool wear hob wear or the life of the cutting tool in terms of the quality of the gear in terms of the noise generated there so interesting results and the results are better than the results we obtained by conventional processes that we also conducted a comparative study and these results we reported in high impact factor journal uh, journal of sustainable materials and technologies having impact factor 10.68 Uh, journal of material research and technology and tribology internationals so this work was conducted at indian institute of technology indore and i was the co supervisor of the phd student so very 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 impressive work and work related to advanced and sustainable manufacturing of gears is reported in those review and research articles i also edited um, these international books one as the lead editor sustainable manufacturing for elsphere one as the second editor uh, that is on spark erosion machining for crc press now let's go ahead and try to understand in other way how advanced and sustainable manufacturing for a better world so here case number 3 example 3 uh, targeting goal number 4 quality education and goal number 17 partnership for the goals although i said 17 partnership for the goals is a key utilizing which you can target other goals so quality education so here we carried out two teaching learning based projects we developed a virtual lab a sort of virtual learning space for a better understanding of the manufacturing topics contents uh, for our students so that they can just have this manufacturing virtual lab on their uh, uh, fingertip and can access this lab virtually remotely uh, here i just wanted to play a few of the animations we developed here so these are the indigenously developed animations we developed here at university of johannesburg i'm trying to but yeah, it's okay so i think let's go ahead so this virtual lab was having the uh, comprehensive uh, learning management system where animations videos quizzes with the help of which we try to communicate each and every aspect of the manufacturing process which were the part of that course content uh, i myself completed pg diploma in higher education and completed uh, two short learning programs one is on african insights and other one is on artificial intelligence in the 4 ir so this is how we can make an impact so these are the advanced manufacturing related contents uh, in manufacturing engineering virtual lab now partnership for the goals so yes my students my colleagues these are my first partners and visiting academics and my local and international collaborators and south african young academy of science south african institute of industrial engineering where i am i am a professional member south african institute of mechanical engineering south african society for engineering education engineering council of south africa royal academy of engineering krakow institute of of university of technology where i am a, a visiting professor so these are my partners so partnership for the goals i am trying my best to collaborate and by this collaboration to sort out other goals uh, these are some institutes and companies uh, worldwide where i am uh, doing joint projects related to teaching academic and research i am the editor uh, for two book series of crc press one is on industrial engineering other one is on advanced materials processing and manufacturing and uh, seven international journals out of those seven two international journals i am the associate editor and those are the reputed journals in the advanced manufacturing field so this is about case 3 example 3 i try to communicate how we can make a better world now example number 4 the last one where uh, little bit different my hod wants me to take care of the industrial engineering students as well because my department is in the mechanical and industrial engineering so i also uh, do research in some of the aspects of uh, lean manufacturing 
which are industrial engineering related topics, but that are also in advanced manufacturing. So we are carrying out some projects related to ergonomics, lean manufacturing and industrial safety. Uh, you might have heard about the 5S Japanese techniques, Siri, Sieton, Siso, Sitsuke and Siketsu. So these Japanese techniques are for neat, to prepare neat and clean workplace, to reduce the wastages and to identify the defects and all these things. So we tried our best to make university workplace clean and green uh, in the campus where we are working. To, we started from our workshop, so we implemented these five S techniques in lean manufacturing. Lot of projects are going on on ergonomics as well, and intention is to, the target is to reduce or provide or devise such a solution where we can, where we can reduce the occupational accidents and injuries thereby, so that we can just try to contribute to saving the world's GDP because three million occupational accidents take place every year worldwide and huge loss to GDP because of breakdown and machine downtime and all these things. So one piece of work where we uh, presented our poster and we won the People's Choice Award of uh, uh, some uh, thousand US dollars uh, represented University of Johannesburg and here, the condition of our uh, workshop before 5S implementation and condition of our workshop after 5S implementation, so you can see the difference. So these are the contribution towards sustainable development goal number three, that is the good health and well-being, because minimizing the occupational accidents and the injuries, and sustainable development goal number eight, that is the decent work and economic growth. So trying to develop some uh, good work culture there, uh, safety for the technicians, for the students and all stakeholders. Now let's quickly talk about some facts and figures, what's going on across the world. So the overall ranking of the nations, United Nations, 193 United Nations, 2022 ranking based on SDG, where score 100 indicates that all SDGs have been achieved. So ranking you can see, Finland, Denmark, and Sweden are the top three countries, and South Africa is at 108. What is going on in South Africa, that I'll also quickly discuss, and there is, uh, a university ranking, times impact ranking. So our university, University of Johannesburg, is standing at 69th position overall, and last year we were at first place for SDG 8, and we are number one in South Africa and number two in Africa. Now about the South African government. So South African government is uh, considering this sustainable development as a green economy, green economy as a just transition to a resource efficient, low carbon and pro-employment growth path. And lots of schemes are there, lots of plans are there, like National Strategy for Sustainable Development, and then Environmental and Cultural Sectoral Plan, Strategic Plan, where nine priority sectors and areas have been identified by the Department of Environmental Affairs. These areas are like green building and the built environment, sustainable transport and infrastructure, clean energy and energy efficiency, and then sustainable water management, sustainable waste management, and government is quite active. So I'm sure that you know, maybe next year we'll be having the good position uh, as a nation worldwide. Now let's quickly see some challenges. So we know our uh, sheer size and rapid pace of our growth, this increasing population and the accelerated demand are the problems, are the challenges. Along with that, some lack of awareness, working beyond the comfort zone, positivity of time, and these are some challenges. But there are solutions. So number one solution opportunity is better together in achieving SDG. So better together means let's make a partnership via SDG 17 and try to address other SDGs. Along with this, youth empowerment upskilling that we are busy with, we are uh, uh, providing training to our students, junior colleagues, and our um, other partners, and also engaging with them for the sustainable development goals. SDG advocacy dissemination, integrating SDGs into our te teaching and research activities, training activities, research development innovations, and plans, policies, funding, and scholarships, and interdisciplinary engagements, and the motto of our school that is mentorship, leadership, and partnership. We believe in mentorship, leadership, partnership. So we are uh, having the uh, constitution of some research groups where we are um, trying to help others, trying to train the junior colleagues and the students and devising solutions, uh, focusing on 
other aspects as well as sustainable development goals. So here now I would like to end with a conclusion and call to action. So my conclusion is this technological advancements, this industrial revolutions will never end. It's a journey, not the destination. Our focus should be on uh, continuous improvement to achieve the excellence and sustainability. And my call to action is uh, let's collaborate via Sustainable Development Goal, SDG uh, 17, to make a better and sustainable world. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me start by acknowledging the university executives, all the academics, uh, Prof. Gupta, and the family, students, and friends that are present here. In response to a uh, presentation of Prof. Gupta, today is a spring day. The trees are turning green. The plants are turning green and his presentation and his work is all about green economy. Global community is busy pursuing United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to make a better world by 2030. With regards to that, the people, planet, and profit are on focus to strengthen the three pillars. That is the society, environment, economy of sustainability. Prof. Gupta's Kapil Gupta's research activities are aligned as seen from his uh, presentation. He is making impactful and noteworthy contribution towards sustainable development goals, SDGs 3, 4, 8, 9, 12, and 17. Advanced materials processing and sustainable manufacturing based project he carried out are indeed important to these new requirements related to cost, quality, and sustainability. Since environmental emissions are of major concern these days, and compliances are in place to achieve sustainable manufacturing by the research conducted by Prof. Gupta. Moreover, global competition competition also entails cost minimization with quality enhancement. For all important industrial and scientific application, a wide range of difficult materials have to undergo extensive machining. To make parts and components, Prof. Gupta is busy devising new advanced and environmentally friendly solutions to materials that are produced, to materials at low cost and with less environmental footprints. As evidently shown uh, from his publications, the results of his research are useful and very impactful, and they impact uh, his peers globally, not only to new uh, knowledge generation, but also the kind of review articles that he is writing uh, with the citations that are acquired by international peers. Green manufacturing strategies such as dry cutting and MQL-based machining, modern manufacturing and process optimization and hybridization are the new ways of bringing advancement in conventional manufacturing. To establish such strategies and techniques for, for commercialization and regular usages in manufacturing, the attempts that are made by Prof. Gupta and his team are effective and helpful. Green manufacturing is very important and it is the language of all researchers across the world because of the challenges that we encounter in our environment. Since one cannot uh, 
imagine operations of any industry without a GA. Prof Gupta have been contributing significantly into that area. To fulfill requirements of cost quality and sustainability, advance in sustainable manufacturing of GAs and optimization of GA manufacturing processes are of significance. And when manufacturing is alive, we know that uh, how it is impacting to the economy, uh, especially the joblessness that we are facing in South Africa. Therefore, Prof. Gupta's research is aligned to that, where he has carried out an extensive investigation on novel manufacturing of GS using modern machining processes like abrasive wage water jet, um, laser, and thermoelectric discharge machining. The outcomes of his investigation are quite interesting and considerable when finding alternatives to traditional GA manufacturing processes. To add more on that, we, we have noted from his presentation how he contributes to, to the knowledge in terms of books that he is writing and editing. And I um, actually uh, have a chapter that is an editor to that book as well. I would also like to highlight and appreciate his attempt is making for advanced manufacturing skill transfer to his students, junior colleagues, and other partners. Since advanced manufacturing is a critical skill in South Africa, there is a need of experts in this area who can conduct research not only research, but also product development, innovation, and increase the training skills shortage that we, we, we experience in South Africa. And Prof. Gupta is one relevant professor that is playing in that role. I would like to finish with a saying that Prof. Gupta's contribution to quality education, research and innovations training is very impactful and beneficial to University of Johannesburg, South Africa, and partners, including the international world. And I am proud to say I'm very happy for Prof. Gupta, and I'm very positive that he will continue to produce more goods in this area. I thank you.